the conference is great. It's wonderful to see so many people from all over the world coming together because they care about engineering education. So it's very important to start young. And by young we mean by the age children learn to read and write. It's really important because at that age children are very curious about the world. They want to understand how the world works and they don't have stereotypes. So we really need to uh, start early so they can discover new things and also they can maybe think, what if I become an engineer? What if I become a computer scientist? Right, at that age, children really want to explore everything. And the world around them is a world composed of uh, objects that have been engineered. It's a world of smart objects. So let's give them the tools so they can start early to understand that there's no magic, that these objects were made and built and programmed. Yeah, so it's very important. So parents want their children to learn and learn new things. However, they do not want them to be sitting in front of screens and using computers all the time. And they're right. Developmentally, children at that age need to be playing, need to be creating, need to be interacting with others, need to be using their bodies. So if we could bring the experience of computer science and the experience of engineering with a playground approach, and children can be talking and interacting with others and learning how to collaborate and using their bodies, then that's, that's good. But if we want to have kids in front of a screen for a lot of time, that's not good. So parents are going to not be receptive to that. And they're right, rightly so. So I think teachers who have been teaching for a long time want the best for their children. And they understand that the world is changing. And they understand they need to provide tools for children, intellectual tools, for children to understand this world around them. However, they're not going to want playpen types of activities for children. So these playpen types of activities are very constrained, are very limited. Uh, so if we are going to bring technology and computational thinking and coding and engineering to the classroom, we need to do it with a playground approach which is to allow play, to allow interactions, to allow discovery, creativity, imagination. And, children, and teachers who understand that and they're trained, in general they're receptive, especially if they can see that this approach can help them teach better math or science or literacy. But teachers need professional development, teachers need to learn it themselves first. So we designed Kibo for every child and we were not particularly focused on some specific populations. However, there are different experiences done around the world that have shown that Kibo could potentially be used for different populations. So for example, in Panama we did a study uh, with a school for children with autistic spectrum disorder and the teachers adapted the curriculum and adapted the technology that could be used with them. So again, it's not only about the technology, it's about the curriculum and the adaptations of that technology. So uh, for this particular age, again, I repeat again, when I see children in front of a computer screen for many hours, that's something I don't want. Uh, I think there is something that's not healthy, that's not natural. Children need to be playing, talking, interacting, running around, being outside. And so if they are going to be in front of a computer screen, they should be doing something creative and productive and content driven. But the same is true for reading a book. I don't want a child reading a book for four or five hours at a time. That would not be healthy. So it's the same thing for sitting in front of a computer screen. Any activity that you do for too long is not right. And therefore, that's why I particularly like activities such as Kibo, where the children can engage their whole body. And if they're going to be using things in a screen, for example, Scratch Junior, let's do it for a short amount of time. Let's not uh, forget that our job is to engage children in all kinds of learning, uh, motor, physical, social. So coding as literacy and coding as playground, I believe it's really important to keep those frames of mind because once the technology comes, we forget about the why and the how of the technology. So if we keep an idea that at the end of the day what we our goal is to teach children to be fluent with technology so they can become active participants in society that's what means literacy and so they can become uh, playful in their approaches to learning that's the coding as playful that that's a, a way to to make sure we're doing things right in a developmentally appropriate way yeah so this is a little bit more complex than just a questionnaire uh, what we look is at children's learning over time and so we look at their process 
So, and maybe it takes time, it doesn't matter if it's fast or slow, it's important that it's done right. And so what we look is at the building blocks that they are forming in their heads. And we created lots of studies. Uh, so we have techniques for studying and measuring uh, if children are developing in good ways while using this technology. And this is derived from our PTD or Positive Technological Development Framework.